Hey, my name is Ross Marquand and I play Red Skull. You are listening to Panels to Pixels podcast. Check it out. I, I missed you. This was all you? Bringing me here? Yes. The Thraxians told me that they needed my help. They do need your help. Why? It's complicated. Come with me and... Now, why would you lie to me again? You killed thousands of people. Yes. Why would you think I'd ever want to see you again? You called Mom a pet. Mark, I need your help. I can't believe you put them up to this. Made them lie to me, too. Just listen. I don't have to listen to anything you say. Mark. Look, I'm... Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Jamie. And this is Panels the Pixels podcast. We are continuing our coverage, but with this episode, we're doing our final episode for the first half of Invincible Season 2. Obviously, with, uh, the I would say, what, the mid-season finale? Because they're going to come back with more later, Jamie? Yeah. But they haven't given us a date yet. They haven't given us a date, but obviously, I like, like I like to call it a mid-season finale for episode four, which is entitled "It's Been a While." Now, anytime I hear that, I think of the Stained song. Oh, jeez! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to sing it, but yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the. Uh, this is the mid-season finale. Uh, they, like we have no tentative date. This will be a spoilerful podcast. So if you haven't listened to or watched the episode before, go back watch the episode, season two, episode four, Invincible. It's been a while. Come back to us if you like to be spoiled. Hang around, stick around, be spoiled, and just watch the Whatever episode. Whatever makes you happy. Whatever makes you happy. Uh, I'm not one to. Uh, sway people from not listening to us but <laughs> i i like the idea that people who are interested in being spoiled and then going watching watching the episode or show or movie they go yes <laughs> it's like okay that's what they were talking about now i can pay attention <laughs> you know or no they got that wrong because <laughs> i've been known to say things and get things wrong but uh we do go into third detail when we actually do write our notes on, on occasion so with that, we're going to move into it. And the synopsis, Jamie, for this episode. Mark answers the call to save an alien species, but the mission has unexpected personal consequences. Yep. <laughs> and I think we already figured out what those were from the last episode. Yeah, at the very last episode, we already saw that <laughs> because we already saw he was duped and his father called him to another planet with the Thraxans. And uh, what what were your overall thoughts about this particular episode? Did there were there things that you liked? Was were there things that you didn't like? I really liked this episode. I thought they handled the absentee father really, <laughs> really well. Like, oh yeah, I thought they handled Debbie well. I thought they handled Adam Eve well. Mm. It's sad, it but is sad. I thought I. Th- just the the realness and the comp the complexities of the emotions and everything. I thought that's what Kirkman nails. Yeah, it, it's it's the relationships between people, the drama within. Because obviously, you know, Nathan abandoned everybody, and you could tell that from the very beginning <laughs> of the episode. Yeah, because it literally takes off like we see um, previously on, and you see it's like. Uh, Hey, Mark, it's been a while. And then literally they go right into the episode and we see Nathan traveling on. Nolan. Uh, yeah. Nathan. Nolan. I keep saying Nathan. Why do I keep? <laughs> Maybe I, when I look at him, I think Nathan Explosion from <laughs> Metal Applicants. <laughs> Just call him Omni-Man. Go with that. Omni-Man. There you go. <laughs> But uh, yeah, my overall thoughts, I, I found this to go to be a fast paced episode filled with a lot of answers 
and pretty much people realizing a lot of themselves. And that's including Mark, that's including Debbie at a certain point, as well as Eve, and apparently Marler. Yep. <laughs> Can't forget the Marler. Not the twins, because not really twins anymore. They don't well. look like twinsies. <laughs> By the end of the episode, they're no longer twins. <laughs> but he can make as many doubles of himself as he wants to make himself a twin if he really wanted always to. always been that way, though. Yeah, he could dilute himself all, the, all he wants with his DNA. But, uh, yeah, it's it was like uh, a lot of growing for a lot of these characters or growing to something different that they didn't expect of themselves before. And I really did enjoy it. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens with this later on. Yeah. You know, but the, the main focus at this point within the episode was literally Omni-Man, Nolan, and what he was dealing with uh, after he left Earth. So the first thing that we do see is literally right after it left off, but the way the episode takes off, not to make fun of it or put a pun in there. Uh, Nolan takes off after he beat the crap out of his own son on Earth and leaves him for dead and flies into space and, and moves forward. And we get um, the song Avalanche by Nick Cave. Oh, my God. Was that perfect? It they, was they really kill it with they, the music. Yeah, they, they made it great for with the music choices and song choices. And it just worked perfectly. I, I just love it was like a James Gunn kind of thing for the movies. Yeah. You know, if you look yeah. at Guardians of the Galaxy and they pick out the perfect songs for cert, like the, the movies themselves for the Guardians of the Galaxy movie and the way they're doing it, whoever was here either. And it's more pop oriented, too, by the way, it's more current pop based. Which is really good. You know, I think at one point we had creep and stuff like that yep. and, in the show. But with this is a little bit more current. And uh, I'm not a huge fan of Nick Cave, but I recognize the song and I, I remembered it. But I really did enjoy it for the fact that it shows Nolan going through the pain as he's flying through the galaxy, trying to find and make sort of sense of what he had done what he left and what he is doing now. And then when he sees this alien vessel that's in trouble, he saves it just because of habit and he saves these people. And uh, the ending lyric as he's doing that, because you could see at a certain point, he's waiting there in front of like some sort of sun before he saves the ship. Looks like he's ready to like throw himself into it and destroy himself. But he winds up saving the ship with the Thraxons on it, but the final lyric on it is really cool because it ends on the lyric line of the crumbs I've left behind in the, within the song, meaning that it, it's like what, how he feels about his life before this. And then later on, we do get the story of how he made a life with the Thraxons. Did you have anything uh, about that more or anything about the uh, the Thraxons themselves? I felt like seeing the Thraxons go towards that or ne that saving like gave him a purpose. Like he was about to, I think, try and kill himself. Yeah. And then saving them gave him a purpose. Yeah. I don't I don't think he realized. How much he no longer. He no longer fits his original purpose. He gave up at a certain point. He didn't know where he fit in the in the galaxy. Yeah. Honestly, there's no world, one world, but I'm saying in the galaxy or the universe. He doesn't know because it's uh, him. And he did something, too, which is against his Viltrumite uh, genetics. They are not there to save people. They are there literally to dominate, control and destroy a planet, you know, or destroy the planet and control the people on it. And, and he no longer wants to do that. And he long, yeah, he no longer wants to do that. 
but then you know we're thrust upon the current status of him where mark's right in front of him and mark just unleashing on him with anger uh, you but see- first hugging him this, well, the standoff before that, you, you're you waiting for Mark to punch him. And then he chooses to hug him. And he chooses to hug him, saying he missed him. And I think even Nolan was just like, what in the blue blazes is and going then, on? Then the anger comes, which is then totally anger warranted comes. <laughs> yeah. and totally fair. And-, and, and the multiple F-bombs that we get out of Mark throughout <laughs> the episode, too, by the way. I'm like, holy poop. <laughs> He's like cursing up a storm right in front of his dad he don't care well he's an adult now he's in college <laughs> and his dad did try to kill him uh, that is true you, yeah you even <laughs> cursing in front of your dad is the last thing you're worried about at that point it's like yeah you, you busted most of my teeth out of my face anyway dad so uh i could say whatever the fuck i want <laughs> but uh, you know you know with mark coming at him too with all that anger saying you can't tell whether if no one's lying to him fair <clears throat> yeah and then brings out the fact that he called mark's mother a pet and was this you know we could see the 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 sound in mark's voice you know you got to give it to uh you know one of our favorite actor voices in a steven young and how he was able to convey that that bitter taste in his mouth when you called my mother a pet yeah you know and all because you know it it was all done very well in a sense of like hearing it the the conviction in each voice and all that nathan could say was i'm so uh, nathan i keep saying that nathan i i did this one monarch too when i was covering with ben i was like i was calling somebody amber now i realize where amber came from it was from this show yeah uh too many shows everybody that we're all podcasting on it's pretty funny and i'm waiting for somebody to say uh, uh me saying little cricket too from gen v which we are still trying to finish <laughs> by the way but um literally the uh the i'm sorry comes out of nolan's mouth and that's which i never expected yeah i didn't expect that either uh mark really takes it badly after he finds out it's like wait you know we find out a little later too that you know he sees his father kissing a thrax (laughs) the little tongue (laughs) and then and then it's like wait there's a blue purplish baby there my notes are (laughs) <laughs> he has a new wife and then in all capital letters and a kid exclamation point question mark question mark and then just yeah. jesus h christ <laughs> yeah exactly right that's like wow he moved quick well yeah. apparently thraxins develop quickly <laughs> well i mean they're bugs it makes sense they have so, a shorter lifespan and shorter lifespan apparently and uh even his new wife even mentions it later on when Mark tries, you know, to save her from the Viltrumites that do show up because that's literally what Nolan needed Mark there for was to protect the Thraxons along with him to protect his own brother because they'll see him as some sort of anomaly. You know, they, they're Viltrumites. He's not allowed to procreate. It was okay with the human because they were similar species. Correct. But not and the fact that it even worked. Like the, yeah. the the biologist in me is like the biologist in me is like too. It's like, wow, um, I see a lot of chafing going on. Well, not that. <laughs> I didn't go into that. But just like but also when similar how, species yeah. procreate, sometimes they can get an offspring. Correct way different species don't get an offspring Mm -hmm. but if and then most of different species when they do create an offspring it's usually sterile so i'm wondering if mark or that other baby are sterile Hmm. so well you should really talk to amber now (laughs) she doesn't have to wear a condom um (laughs) i'm just joking but uh yeah yeah that is true yeah, and you bring it up makes does make a lot of sense. Uh, also, we don't know within the Thraxons if they are in any way with certain 
species of insects, certain um, animals on Earth, they are able to reproduce synonymously, you know, like alone. But it's very rare. Yeah, but that wasn't this case. That, yeah. Yeah. But in this case, you know, but I'm just saying for like Mark's half brother. Yeah. That's the possibility of assuming being assuming he's replicate. still alive. Yeah. <laughs> if we ever see them again. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we will. Uh, because the last thing that we did see was literally just well, the Thraxans were thrashed, as I, I should say, not to use those words, but the only person they took were Nolan, but they left Mark for to do what Nolan was supposed to do on Earth. Am I correct in saying that or am I wrong? Yeah. Okay. No, they left him. <laughs> And that's that's oh, it, fucked up. This is spoiler full, but you know, the, yeah, no, 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 no. It was that it's just that was fucked up. Like, are you gonna, you know, you can kill a few hundred to make them follow you, or we'll come in and kill millions. <laughs> Correct. So literally, they want to see progress on Mark's part of what he killed. Well, at, on Earth yeah. after he, after they left him. So that's how literally how it ends up with, but. The, the events that were in between were very riveting and very interesting too. not to move away from the discussion of Mark and Nolan, but let's talk about the Mauler twins or <laughs> not so twinsies. King Mauler the, and his yeah. subject. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. He's like King Mauler and his new subject because he just made himself clone. Ha ha. I know who the one is in charge. Yeah. Ha-ha. I love how the one woke up. He's like, oh, you're the clone. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> like that was such a change. As soon as his face turned around, it's like, oh yeah, you're half skull on skin on skull. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, nope, you're oh, but I have all your thoughts and I have all your memories. But I look better. <laughs> but uh yeah, the but the funny thing is is by the end of it, and we see at the very end, is that King Muller gets his just dues because the, the clone winds up killing him anyway at the end. Yep. And we're back to where we were with the Mauler. Like that, like I thought it was really interesting that there would be a King Muller and a lower one. Like, oh, this is going to be interesting to see how it plays out. And like, I, I should have expected that it played out this quickly. Like, <laughs> I knew it, I, well, the funny thing is, is I, I knew it was going to play out this way in the sense that the way Muller works and the Muller quote unquote twins work is they work well when they don't know when the other is the original or not the original for when they're yeah. put down. So in this case, this twin, like, like a the, boondock saints who's, who was yeah. born first thing. Yeah. Well, I didn't even watch that, but I, I think of, it's kind of a deterrence between the both of them and they have to work together, even though they're the same person. So it's that edge of like, who's, who's the original, who's not the original. So I'm not going to kill you because I don't know if you're <laughs> you're the original or I'm the original or if I'm going to survive, if you're going to survive. And they're always equal. They're on equal f- footing. Exactly. Thinking wise, everything. And they already know what the other one's thinking. They're just bouncing off the information off each other. So I I had a funny feeling. It's like, yeah, this ain't going to last. <laughs> and it didn't. It didn't <laughs> last long at all. It didn't last long at all. It's like it didn't even last half an episode because by the time we saw them it was halfway through <laughs> and i thought i was like okay that was pretty cool so we know where we stand with the mauler people i should say because eventually well, back I, to I, the twins again well yeah, we'll be hopefully back to the twins because we didn't see him make another one but i'm assuming so i wouldn't be surprised if we get a mauler army <laughs> well the way, Imagine if there were multiple Maulers. Well, the way King Mauler was talking, he was talking like there were multiples of the clones. Yes. He made it. We didn't see it necessarily. Correct. But he but did make it also, sound like there were multiple. He had created multiples. He didn't create multiples, but he did get to see multiples when. uh, What's his name? Armand or whoever it was. Uh, the original robot. Or the alternate version of robot that uh, basically mutated himself and Mahler during that whole mishap, the last episode, if you remember. Yeah. So they, he had seen like the female Mahler. He saw 
future Mauler, Mauler with hair, Mauler with a goatee. So there were other Maulers that were there from alternate universes. He could be referencing those as being other clones, but they don't have to be clones. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. But he, he could, there could be uh, some others incubating somewhere, for all we know. And True. and then uh, they just have to wake him up. But, you know, the clone's going to be like, well, I'm in charge of you. Why? Because I'm, the, well, I could be the first clone. <laughs> you know, they, they could have, like yeah. a, you know, they would have to have a battle royale, unfortunately, to find out who's in charge. But, <laughs> and then nobody will realize who's in charge again. Me, no, me, no, me, no, me. <laughs> but uh, I, I thought that was pretty cool that we finally get a little bit more from the Mauler twins or the, the Maulers. I, I was looking forward to that because it's kind of a bit of a levity yeah. within the show, I think. Yeah, they've taken a bit of the place where William had last year, last season. Yes, yes. William's yeah. much seen less and a little toned down. He was ba- seemed to be back to normal form. This episode, but you only saw him for like three seconds. Yeah, that is true. I got a few things too from uh, William that I did enjoy. Uh, the you. next topic of choice I would bring up, unless you have one of of a character. No, I mean Donald. Donald. Yeah. Can't remember who Donald is. He's the guy with the glasses. Yeah, no, he's the guy with the glasses who we is no longer human. He's literally a clone. Which is interesting. Finding out what had happened to him before the other versions of him, because there were multiple versions. And he doesn't take it so bravely. He he finds the glasses in the rubble of the house for where wow. Omni Man was there, and then he realizes those are my glasses. Yeah. And uh, he does further research. He looks into the logs of the company and finds all the videos. I love how he had to backdoor his way in, though, because at first he wasn't allowed in the Grayson files. Yeah, and he used Cecil's login in order to get in. Yeah. And I I thought that was pretty cool because he knows. So I'm wondering if every version of him always knew in some way. So that's pretty cool. He goes into the bathroom. Oh, yes. But we, we also see Omni-Man when he blew up the house and then how, how Donald wind up taking his own life for you, sir, and blowing up and detonating the bomb. And that's when, you know, that was beforehand because he had to rewind it. And I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, it was, in my opinion, another cloning disaster. But in this case, it's more understandable. But when he stabs himself through the wrist... Right, like, couldn't there be a better way, if you're just checking to see, because it seemed like he was just checking to see if he was bleeding. Correct. If he was going to bleed. Like, that, he wanted to check and see if he was still human or, like, a robot or something. Mm-hmm. There's less invasive ways to do that. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> well, there might have been a reason. We didn't, your wrist. We didn't, well, we didn't see him try to cut his wrist at first, because if... If you look at the knife, it was bent at the tip. Yes. Which he didn't know. Like at first, when he started bleeding, he was like, okay. So that shows like that things are he's normal. somewhat invulnerable to a certain degree. So that must have been the reason for him with the veracity and force to go through the rest. Or he was just trying to do it. Like, okay, I'm doing, I, I took it as. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Okay, I got to do it. I'm going to just, just it. do it. And it just yeah. goes right through. My question, though, after that is we didn't see him clean up or do anything. I'm wondering if that he- healed right away. Yeah, I'm cu- and I'm curious exactly what's in there that bent the knife. Yes. Yeah. Viltra might steal. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what Cecil, and you know that's a Cecil experiment right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 100%. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I found that uh, that that scene very interesting because it's only going to show us what we're going to get by for the second half that's coming up after 2024 uh, or in 2024. Next up, I would like to bring up, uh, well, college days with 
Amber, Eve, and William. <laughs> they all just show up one day and, you know, and even William says, uh, and Amber says, like, oh, look, if you need somebody to talk to, we're here, blah, blah, blah. Well, the treehouse is so far away to go to, but we're here for you, meaning that, you know, because they were all on bad times. Amber kind of mentions that, yeah, Mark kind of went away because Eve was looking for him initially. And she goes, yeah, well, he's off planet, literally. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> And she goes, basically stating, quote unquote, perils of dating a superhero, right? Yeah, He's everybody's cool with it, but her, because she needs somebody who understands. Yeah. Well, and Eve wouldn't understand. Friend. Yeah. And, you know, I love how Amber goes, yeah, he's lucky he's cute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And they, they tell her basically where Mark is. It's like he took off to save some bugs or some aliens out in space. And it's been a few weeks. So it's been like three weeks. So he's missed three weeks of college. Yeah. I don't think he cares. Well, his GPA is going to drop and he's going to get tossed out of college. That's yes. <laughs> he didn't make the last three or four tests that I gave out. Your GPA was saving a planet. <laughs> yeah, no, that doesn't help us here. Uh, Cecil, can you get me some extra credit? Sure. <laughs> like William's not showing up too much either. It's like that is true. He's like a bad habit. <laughs> He's like, like we're yeah. adults. That's it's, it's like a, you're it's treating you passage. like an adult. Uh... <laughs> and you start realizing it too. It's like that. That's the cuteness behind William that we all love. Yeah. But um, but yeah, Eve wanted somebody to talk to. Yeah. And didn't have it. And then had to move on to her own superhero ways of doing things. So uh, her encounter with Kill Cannon. Yep. And didn't. yeah, he, he, Kill Cannon was trying to steal something from a robot. It was a sphere. So I'm sure that's going to come back. It was some sort of orb that uh, killed Cannon and it had it in his hand that apparently Robot cherished from uh, the Guardians of the Globe. So how he found out where it was and how he got in is two different stories that we don't know. But the battle lasts for a while. And during the battle, an accident happens and innocent bystanders in the car perish. To some degree, oh. where it goes right into the water. Eve is not able to do that, but save them as quickly. So she dives in after dealing with a uh, kill cannon. And she's able to get the people out. You know, she it looks like she created herself a, her own little rebreather, gets them out of the water, gets up on the bridge. And I think this is her, her first feel of how human life is very, very precious. Because she's asking and pleading for help from somebody else because she doesn't know CPR. She doesn't know she's all that. She's known human life is precious. She's never had a problem with that. Yeah. She just, between the last few episodes, um, she's been trying to help, but only makes things, ends up making things worse. Worse, yeah. And that's what she feels like she did here. She was trying to help and ends up killing two people. Yeah, well, because of we're course not that's sure what happens. Dead, but yeah, eh, they seem dead. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll go with dead. But well, it's the responsibilities. Like uh, with uh, her great, I hate using Spider-Man terms, but you know, great power comes great responsibility. Yeah, and, and she's uh, learned, but she's also got the guilt that her dad made her feel. Well, he's a dick. He's a dick, but she, <laughs> just like Nolan, he's a dick, but it's still their parents. Like, it's it's hard to just yeah, brush that, it off when you're in that. Yeah, you have that stuck in your brain because somebody just infiltrates your brain all the time with it. But and, uh, talking about bad parenting and bad parents. Uh, <laughs> that, well, but let's fin. I mean, let's finish up with Eve. Like, good. she ends up going home. Yes, I forgot about that. Yeah, she goes she, back. We see her at the front door, and then her father opens up, and he's got that kind of, even from a distant shot in animation, you could tell the look of like, hmm, you're here. Because he told her not to come back until she gives up all that superhero shit. Yep, meaning that she's so, going to have to give it up. 
Little she's bit. made the choice to give it up. Yeah. Because she feels like she's making things worse every time she tries. Like, that's heavy. Like, what? This is her identity. Like, and now she's giving it up, tail between her legs, back to this asshole of a father. Like, I think that's not going to last. But yeah, hopefully not. But right now, she, you know, it's probably not going to last in the sense that it's going to be through losing her father, maybe. Because once he's gone, she doesn't have anything to feel about that and then well, hopefully her mother i'm not saying when I want mark's her back, dead <laughs> hopefully when mark's back she can have a conversation with somebody who kind of understands and well but then yeah. again mark's got a lot of shit to talk <laughs> yeah, about mark's work got, through. yeah he's got a lot on his head right now it's like hold on if i don't do the whole eve can you help me kill 200 people at least <laughs> yeah the it's, <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be rough for everybody. Or do I have to kill all the guardians of the globe like my dad? <laughs> the new ones. <laughs> uh, I would not put it past uh, the writers to be like, "Hey, uh, let's get a battle between Mark and the guardians of the globe. See how who lasts." Uh, and uh, will he kill Immortus <laughs> like his father <laughs> again? <laughs> <laughs> But we don't know. Uh, that's something we'll have to wait for and see because that's pretty much the cliffhanger of the episode of like what's going to happen. Yeah. But uh, I did, however, enjoy, even though it was brutal, the battle scenes with the Viltrumites when they do make it to the planet. It was at that, granted, it was given at that moment when Nolan winds up asking Mark for his help to save that planet. And he has that consequence of fear even during the battle with the Viltrumites and Mark along with them and with dealing with the Thraxans of I'm doing exactly what I did for what I did on earth I'm feeling for these people and it's like you could see it in his face and in his hear it in his voice of how he's struggling it's like I'm not supposed to do this I'm a Viltrumite I'm meant to take over I'm meant to destroy but here I am again, like, but I'm like, instead of what, 20 some odd years, he learns it in what, eight months? Yeah. Because he's been gone that long and he has a son already <laughs> again. So it's like, oh, okay, well, at least he learned it a little quicker again, but it's still, you know, history repeats itself. They're coming back for you and. Now you're starting to see this, and now your son from your first marriage has to take care of the planet that you were once meant to take over. But the the battle scenes within it were the very splash paged looking. It was awesome. It was like panel to panel to panel. The way they were bouncing Correct. back and forth between the two fights. It was a comic book set in motion. It Correct. was gorgeous. Yeah, it was like, that's why we are panels to pixels. But I'm just saying, in this case, it's literally panel on a pixel that yeah. is moving every once in a while. And it's very much like like you stated, the motion capture of comics like they had with Watchmen years ago when they did the motion things. Uh, Marvel had done it years later. Uh, with uh, I'm forgetting the name of the comic run, but it was Knights of something. But they, uh, yeah, it, it looked crazy because they couldn't do every action. I I would seem it would seem that they 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 did that for more dramatic effect, but it worked. Yeah. But then we got some really riveting scene with that female Viltrumite that was going after Mark with Dula. Yeah, she had Dude, the long hair. ponytail with the knife on it. The braid with the knife yeah, at the end. The that braid was on it. Yeah. Awesome. And very well executed, but she was very determined, knew how to use her skills, knew how to go after Mark. It was done very well. Uh, but you could see he was still holding back and holding his punches. And then you could throughout the battle, that's all that Nolan was telling Mark is that he has to fight. He's killing you. Can't you see that? It's either you kill him or you're getting killed. And literally he's putting it out there to Mark. And then that's what happened at that point. Mark doesn't hold punches back after a while with her. You can see he's beating the crap out of her. Yeah, he makes a decision. He makes that decision. 
And by then it was a little bit too late because she already had the upper hand and Mark's been beaten up a little bit. Nathan, I mean, he was, he was close. Yeah. And and Nathan was holding his own too. Nolan, 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 Nathan, (laughs) Nolan, whatever that guy's name, Omni man. The Um, name starts with an N. (laughs) Yeah, whatever. (laughs) Everybody will laugh at me now when they listen to this podcast. But anyhow, they, uh, he's, he's holding his own and he's taking care of it. And then Nolan winds up helping Mark at certain points, intervals throughout the fight. Then he dispatches the one guy by smashing his head in, crushing it and in. Pauses for a minute. And pauses for a minute to see. You can see the how crushed in the yeah. skull is, uh, which is very much like uh, like you said, it, it stated before. It was like very much like a panel. It's like crushed, done. Yeah. And then uh, he goes to save her, <laughs> save Mark from her, and he just tears out her throat, mouth. No, and- he elbows. Her face, her whole head goes into his elbow and like the jaw just pulls down. He basically and, curb and stomped her with his elbow. Yeah, very true. <laughs> wow. Like, that was brutal. Yeah. Like and it was gory and the br- mouth I mean, that's what, just bleeding out. And yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's what we watch this show for is that some of what we watch this show for is the gore that you can't <laughs> do in real life. <laughs> yeah. And this battle did not disappoint in that aspect. I mean, um, Lucian, Lucian was the guy he was fighting with before this battle yes. down under in the underground part of the caves and just like when he cuts that guy's stomach open like, with his hand he, he just like karate yeah, chops just, his stomach open like but a bunch of times like it was like a rapid fire thing yeah and then the guts come pouring out oh my god that was so cool and then he comes back to this fight like with his sh- with his guts like in his shirt just like holding them in yeah it's like I, I gotta tuck those in uh yeah and yeah but before that after that though after he got uh when nolan wound up like ripping out his his guts he used like a stalagmite or whatever to shove it into him by his chest area so yeah. that's why you thought he was dead uh, but he, he comes back so uh you say vushin i i called him lucian lucan i don't know Lucan, maybe that was lucan l-u-c-a-n so i called him lucan but uh whatever his name is Lucian, Lucan, whatever you want to call him. He he comes back, but you know, basically Omni Man dispatches him just the same at the very end. And uh but oh. then the rest of the, the Vulture might show up during that battle. Well, the other so there were the two, mm-hmm. Vidor and Thula. Mm-hmm. Then that battle ends, Mark passes out. Correct. Mark well, then Mark comes to, but he sees uh, Nate Nolan being, mm. yeah, he's got a brace on him, cuffed on a on a cot, being taken away by the other Viltrumites. Was and there it, was Luke and Lucian also being carried off? I, I think tell. so. So Probably, I think he may have survived as well. He may have survived, but yet we have at the very end somebody else coming to him. Uh, I have it written here. Uh, it's Clancy Brown is the voice, and Lu- uh, Lucan or General Lucian? Cree. Okay, yeah, General Cree, and that's, that's what he calls himself. Yeah, he gives literally. He was there to uh, tell Mark what his situation was on Earth. He's there to take you know. Now you are invincible, or basically, you're gonna have to take over what your father Omni Man did on earth and then you're gonna have to prove to us that you're actually taking care of the planet the way because you're taking up your father's old post and we're gonna kill your dad and we're gonna kill your dad if you don't it's not they're gonna kill his dad no they're gonna kill his dad that's done he's like we're killing your dad now you have to be him on earth you have to take over his job on earth we don't see that so we have till next we don't see him killing the dad but he says we're going we've arrested your father and he will be killed when he gets back to Viltron. Mm. He says they're going to kill him. They're going to kill Omni-Man. All right. Well, I don't believe until I see it. <laughs> well, true. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I'm just telling you, Mark's information right now, his dad has been arrested and will be killed. <laughs> <laughs> and what are the last words that uh, Nolan actually says to Mark? Read my books. Yeah. 
and right after Debbie throws them out. <laughs> well, well, there's that whole scene between Debbie and Cecil because she's not. Well, she wasn't ready to throw him out. She was actually selling his books. Supposedly, she was making money off of them. No, we see uh, her throwing out the books that she has. She's purging him out of her life. Um, so she's going to purge all the sales of the books too. She's purging this, not the one. Like the the current sales, like you know, a normal person goes in and buys the book. Mm-hmm. All of the funds for that, she no longer wants. Interesting, but meanwhile, so, that was what's saving their house to save. You know, putting Mark. Well, she college. has a job, doesn't she? She does have a job, yeah. but you know, whether or not is paying all the bills is another story. That means that she yeah. have to sell the she's, house. She's going through. I mean, this now feels like a divorce purge more than a. Yeah. Husband died purge because like my mom did my mom went through when my parents split up, my mom went through the photo albums and any picture that was just my dad, she flat out got rid of. But it was a picture of like us with my dad. Like she would put like a post-it note over my dad's over face. Over his face, yeah. So that she didn't have to look at him. I know. Um, and she got rid of everything. Absolutely everything. And I I mean, like my divorce did the same thing. Like first I cleared everything out of my bedroom of him. So I didn't have anything in my bedroom and then slowly went through the rest of that. It's like my kids have pictures in their room and that's fine. But the rest of the house, there is no evidence of my ex. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I get it. Like that's what she's going. I understand it too. Yeah. That's that's within any relationship. You don't want to be, you know, reminded of it. And she wants, yeah, she wants nothing to do. And that's why she doesn't want the money. She doesn't want Cecil to have power over her and her son. So that's another well, reason she to get cares rid of that more book about money. Mark than anything. You know, yeah. that, that's the whole thing. She she wants to care about herself and Mark. And the one person that gives her that that edge is a friend of the family that comes over and knows about Debbie, Nolan, and Mark. And he basically puts that in her brain to move on. Which she Art. really needed that. Because after yeah. that whole uh, <laughs> you know, getting help through a group, and that didn't go so well last episode. <laughs> she needed uh, some he positivity. All of their, he, her husband, yep. killed everybody else's spouse, yeah, or partner. Uh, but yeah, I forgot about Art until he popped up, and I was like, "Oh, she does have a friend! Thank God!" Yeah. And he was such a good friend. Like, <laughs> yeah, he was really good at it. Yeah, you know? and he was like, giving positivity to her when she needed it. And, and it's not like he was super powered himself, but he knew of her issues, and she needed that um, that help from a friend. Yeah, like he was like, um, I always thought you were the strong one to handle your life the way that you did you've got the strength. Like you didn't have the superpower. Like he, Nolan had superpowers. Like it was easy yeah. for him. It wasn't difficult or complicated for him, but what you did, like running the house, raising your son, living, you know, yeah. living a life with a superhero that took strength. That was hard. You're the real hero. Mm. Um, and like the quote, the quote of the, of like the Debbie story is you don't need him and you never did. <laughs> like that was that was showing that she had power into herself at that point and i think it was yeah. like uh, her just being self-aware at that point i think she needed to hear that though she did and i think a lot of people need to hear that too but yeah and then of course you know we do get the books at the end like you said uh her throwing left them at out, the curb left at the curb one of which is the entitled uh, The Man with the Invincible Gun. It was the last book that we saw from the, the cover title. Invincible Gun. Invincible. Yeah. <laughs> right there. So. Like, so I guess Mark's got to read those books, but now he's got to find them because they're not at the house anymore. Oh, you can still buy them online on Amazon. Or right. it's a school library. <laughs> but mom might have a problem with that. Yeah, probably. Understandably so. But yeah, overall, I thought it was uh, pretty well done. Uh, there was another scene too with Debbie, though, that I did like. Uh, it was her walking barefoot all the way from her house to the cemetery. And yeah. it was yet another song 
that's in there. It was a song called Blonde Shell by uh, the band Olympus. And that was the theme of that song. And it just worked very well with her walking and just how uh, the lyric was working with uh, the scenery. And thinking it, like a Paul McCartney socks off or shoes off funeral march the type of thing. Oh, from yeah, from Abbey Road. <laughs> yeah, Abbey Road. Yeah, <laughs> Paul is dead. Yeah, yeah, but the way she's at the grave and the way she talks to the gravestone, even though Nolan wasn't even in there, yeah, it, and then it goes into and segues into that uh, conversation with a friend. Where he says you don't need that bum, you never did. Yeah. Meaning that she needed that reassurance too from a friend. And I thought that was really, really cool. You know, she was I, lost. She was having a real to under again, understandably, she was having a real rough time figuring out life. Yeah. Like she had to mourn her relationship. She had to feel a bit like she had a lot going on and she had nobody to talk to. So I get like her yeah. story breaks my heart <laughs> yeah well at least it wasn't olga coming back with another business card for her to go find help with. <laughs> olga tried she did try and she was trying to be nice and helpful with it but yeah but yeah that that's all i had to give for this episode i i think uh i i covered as much as i could from what i remembered what about you I think we covered absolutely everything as far as I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I only have a couple of quotes left. And uh, the first one for me would be William regarding skipping school and being an adult in college. It's so freeing, like wearing pants with no underwear. <laughs> <laughs> I had I had a William one, too. Good. Remember, um, Seance Dog? Turns out he's a talking bug from another planet. Who knew? Not this guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got one from Lucan or Lucian. And he says, the next time you kill somebody, make sure they are dead. And that coming from the voice of Phil Lamar, formerly from Mad TV, and is also a prominent voice actor for animation. We would mostly know him from Green Lantern in the Justice League. That had Tim Daly, and I'm forgetting the legendary Batman voice. Why? Oh, Ben will kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Conroy. Just remembered it. There you, there you go. go. I had a brain fart. But Kevin Conroy, uh, last time I saw Tim, was at a terrific con in Connecticut, and Kevin Conroy was there at the panel, and it had the whole entire Justice League. Well, not entirely. We didn't have Flash there. We didn't have Michael Rosenbaum as the voice actor. But it was cool to have Phil Lamar. I'm hoping to hear more from him, not just you know in Invincible, but more for uh, Justice League and stuff like that, because they're going to be doing more and more of those uh, animated stuff on WB or HBO Max or Max. Sorry, it's just Max <laughs> on the app. So uh, there are more animated uh, movies coming out. Um, I didn't ask Tim, Mr. Daly himself, uh, if he was going to be doing more, but it would be great to hear him as uh, the voice of Superman again. But uh, we got Phil Lamar in this particular episode, which I'm glad we got. But yeah, I just want to throw that in there too, because it was <laughs> another voice actor, just like, um, you know, well, we got himself when we got the Kurgan. Optimus Prime. No, no, that was last episode. Last episode, yeah. <laughs> last episode, Optimus Prime. To this episode, we got the the Kurgan, Clancy Brown. Um, oh, Mark, back to the quotes. Yeah, from Mark. Mm -hmm. Fuck you. I mean, just fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I think that's all I have. Oh, the threat from General Gre General Cree. Mm -hmm. We do not change our minds. Hmm. Well, it is Viltrum. <laughs> they yeah. will not change their minds on their destruction and taking over. So 
they are very much a stubborn planet. But as we could tell, both within Mark and Nolan, they are a stubborn people. And Nolan being a pure blood, and Mark being half. So a lot of yeah. it was for but Nolan, Nolan did uh, change his mind twice. Yes, twice. So it means that there's something in there from the human side that influenced him. Otherwise, why would have he why did he spend all those years in disguise doing all these superhuman things and not doing what he was stationed there to originally do? Right. Why did he, he chose at that one point just to go crazy and ape shit and destroy the original guardians of the globe? There's got to be some sort of backstory. And I would love for them to actually write that in. Yeah. Of why, what snapped in his head to make that happen. There had to be a sure communication we'll from there. Viltrum. And I, I'm curious to see when, when that will come into place. I'm hoping it comes out and, uh, this season or the remaining part of it. But um, with that, I, I think that's everything that we had. Yep. But we did get some feedback. Yay. And afterwards, we will tell you how to uh, <laughs> how to send in your feedback. And that is very, very simple. This is from Steve Brown. Yay, Steve. Hey, Mark and Janie, it's Steve, and this is for uh, Invincible Season 2, Episode 4. It's been a while. Uh, I wasn't going to do a live Steve, and I may still not actually do an actual live Steve of it, but I was just watching the beginning of the episode, and when Ultra, Ultraman, Omni-Man, is flying away, and his beard, like, gets longer. Like, can he control his beard? Because wouldn't, like, razors not be able to cut it? How would, I don't know. Uh, it's been a while. It was in the previously on, and it's also right now. Title of the episode, Mic Drop. Sure, you talked about this in the last episode, or I haven't listened to it yet, but um, in the last episode, they did mention that a Viltramite has never abandoned his post, and a Viltramite has also never um, mated with a planet that they were on. So that's interesting. Oh, the tongue kissing an alien. Ew. And he did it again. He mated with an alien species and had a child. Oh, I think Donald's about to find out that he's a clone. I guess they are allowed to mate with similar species. And the most inconvenient timing ever award goes to the Viltrumites, who of course they're going to show up on Thraxis right now. Mm -hmm. And now this guy is trying to steal from the old Guardians of the Galaxy headquarters. Of course, they're not safe <laughs> here either. Of course, Eve is constantly discovering the uh, dark side of this being a hero when you make a mistake. Oh. Well, he's not wrong in what he's talking to Mark about fighting this Viltrumite woman that she is trying to kill him, so he needs to be better. Have her with her own braid, Mark. So Nolan got her with his elbow. Oh, the secret is in the books, and we just saw a title of one of the books is The Man with the Invincible Gun. Okay, but he's still got to find a way back to Earth, right? I mean, I guess there might be some Thraxes that's still alive on this planet. But, man, this is going to be tough for Mark. Knows how long we have to wait for the second half. Talk to you later. Oh, the Mauler clone killed the King Mauler. <laughs> Yay, Steve. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. I'm not going to do a live steving. Here's a live steving. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of speculation online to, oh, what's going to happen with Mark because of what had happened within this episode, how dark Mark had gone at the very end. Because he was showing that some of his Viltramite thing, like it is uh, tendencies. And we know in another universe, he does go dark. Correct. So that, I think people brought that up too. Uh, there's been several posts. I really haven't looked. I only looked at the headline. So right away, the first looked, thing. I didn't look at all. I didn't want to uh, color my opinion of anything. Yeah, same here. And I just looked at the headlines and I was like, oh, okay. I was like, all right. Well, I could see where they're coming from with that with just that title alone. So uh, yeah, the, it's the alternate realm where Mark and her, his father ruled over Earth and took over whereas in this one they both like even nolan has like a second opinion and thought now mind you think about it steve was saying how guardians of the galaxy i i made the mistake saying nathan 
instead of Nolan. Well, yeah, I always Guardians. want to say Guardians of the Galaxy instead of Guardians of the Globe. It's so <laughs> I always hard. remember Guardians of the Globe, which is so funny, but I can't do that with Nolan. <laughs> I'm always like, okay, Guardians of the... I'm like, it's not Galaxy. Galaxy is wrong. <laughs> that's Groot. <laughs> globe, globe, that's it. Globe. <laughs> globe, globe. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, that's... Uh, Steve's feedback for us. I didn't put anything in there recently, unfortunately, with the holidays and everything. I wasn't able to get one out. I was just luckily barely ready enough to put out the uh, the new episode, which is the previous episode of this, uh, which was part three, uh, episode three for Invincible. So you got that out there for YouTube as well as all the, the podcast player of choice apps that are out there. But we will be uh, putting out there when we come back full time, when we do it weekly, definitely weekly, uh, we'll be doing what if in December. So when that comes out, we will be covering that. I'm forgetting the actual date, but I will apprise you when it comes. I for- keep forgetting to put putting that stuff on my calendar, but there's so much going on. Everything's coming up fast and it is the holidays. So uh, at least we'll have one particular show that we'll be covering here. I'll be covering one other particular show on podcast slash Wilhelm. So that's Monarch. Uh, just to throw that out there quickly. But uh, and then obviously with Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, I'll be um, doing like like I stated before, probably be like one or two movies per month. So I've yet to put one out for the ending of November. I think I put one out in like the middle, which was total recall, but you'll definitely going to get most likely two episodes in December because uh, it's going to get colder and a lot of people need something to do. So (laughs) watch movies, watch movies. It's cold and dark. It's cold and dark. Got to watch something that makes you happy. But uh, we do intend on getting out to you Friday the 13th, the final chapter with Jamie and myself. Uh, I'm still looking to do the co collaboration with Aim for the Head when we do uh, a Night of the Comet. Uh, I definitely want to do Godzilla minus one review on that particular movie as well for Adrenaline. So that might be one that's really quick, which would probably be Godzilla minus one, considering this Thursday I'll be going to see it with Rob and Adam Gonzalez. So, uh, but uh, like I stated, I will be posting things for feedback. And with that, we're going to talk about feedback right now. So I already mentioned it. I will be posting things which would be found on our Facebook page, which would be facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels. It's also mimicked with what's also on Instagram because they're both meta. So whatever I post on one will be posted on the other. So what I like to do is give the information of what we're covering that week. There'll be an image and I'll say, leave your comments below. So check those out. All you have to do is go to facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels. Follow us, ring the bell or do whatever to get more alerted because sometimes people turn off their alerts. I noticed that. Or you go to Instagram as well at panels to pixels podcast. Uh, we could also be heard on YouTube, as I mentioned, but uh, all you have to do is search for Panels to Pixels podcast. Keep that in mind, Panels to Pixels podcast. Josh has the regular Panels to Pixels. That is completely different. Just search for Panels to Pixels podcast. Subscribe, ring the bell to be alerted with anything new that's coming up. And if you really do enjoy what we do and content wise, please give us a thumbs up on any particular episode that you liked. And you could also make comments in there as well, which we will read out. So uh, if you like something on a previous episode, make a comment. We'll talk about it on the next podcast. It's always guaranteed. I usually get alerted for that. So that's why I check my email all the time when it comes to panels to pixels. And speaking of, you could email us at panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to spell T O. The num- uh, pixels and then number one at gmail.com. Just write yourself out a full regular standard email. We'll read it. Read your name or your location if you want and read the, the email and uh, talk and discuss about what your email had in it. 
If you don't feel like just sending her out a regular email, you, you have these cool nifty devices out there that you could record yourself. Everybody does it nowadays. Everybody's doing Zoom. How do you think we're recording this particular episode on Zoom? Yay, Zoom. So, yeah, yay, Zoom. Uh, so you could easily record yourself. You know, A lot of Apple devices have stuff that, right there where you can just send it straight out and just record snippets. And then just like with Steve does with live steving, just record your voice and your thoughts, and then we'll play it on the next episode. You'll be part of the podcast. And then we could actually respond to your voicemail like we did with Steve. So, uh, but yeah, that's something that's way to get us feedback. But uh, we would love some feedback, but also we would love for you people to rate and review us because we could be found on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or whatever podcast player of choice that you use. Mostly a lot of people do their reviews or uh, ratings in Apple Podcasts, which is notably one of the biggest. And that's the reason why they're called podcasts, because <laughs> they, they were made originally through Apple. So uh, if you could give us a five star rating, it'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, if you could kind of, you know, write out your thoughts, too, because they're very prominent and people see those right in the front. Uh, same thing with Spotify as well. But I always tell everybody, you know, you know, I'm not saying please just, you know, just put in a five star rating. No, no, no. Just be honest. If you you like it to some degree, you know, it's a three or four. I you know, I understand. Uh, you know, everybody is subjected to criticism, and I understand that more than anybody. But uh, just please, just give us a review. That's all that's needed, and we will greatly appreciate it, no matter what it is. Uh. But other than that, uh, this is where at the moment in the podcast where where can listeners hear us? So, Jamie, obviously, you've been on several others. You and I have covered another podcast, which might come back next year. So right now, the only thing currently officially <laughs> in the works is doing Friday the 13th, the final chapter with you. <laughs> <laughs> and as well as doing ET with uh, Damien on Washington in the 80s at some yeah. point in time. But we'll also, see when we can get our schedules to line up for that one. Yeah, but also you, you could be heard on podcast go when we covered Sandman cast for Sandman on Netflix. Season two started filming today. Yes. Well, resumed filming today after the Resumed actors. filming today, meaning that by... I would say midway through 2024, I wouldn't be surprised that we get it That's because they're exciting. putting a rush into it. I just I, rewatched season one. So I'm hoping for that to happen. Uh, Mr. Gaiman will probably still be busy with his music uh, as well as teaching. And <laughs> he's doing, Oh, what did I post to your page about Christmas? He was uh, doing, some um, sort of reading in Manhattan. And I'm going. Oh, okay. Where that's is my it? Birthday, that's my uh, birthday. I forget. That's my birthday gift from Tony. <laughs> awesome. So you must have saw it and said, I need to get that. <laughs> yeah. He's like, all right, I was going to try and surprise you with this, but I can't. So he was, hold on, let me. <laughs> it was too, <laughs> too can... evident when I posted it. And he must have been like, oh, crap. Oh, well, no, this. I think that's how he saw it. Um, <laughs> but he, uh. I'm like you took me to Atlanta without me knowing, but yeah, uh, it, uh, he will be presenting a reimagining of a Christmas Carol at Town Hall in New York City. Awesome on December 18th and 19th. Cool. Tickets are available at the townhall.org if you would like to uh, meet up. <laughs> yeah, it's very small venue too, by the way. So I'm glad that he got tickets because sometimes those go fast. But yeah, yeah. So you could hear Jamie at all those. Like I said, we'll probably be back with uh, on podcast go with Sam Mancast when that comes back. So look forward to hearing that. Obviously, more of Jamie on on Adrenaline Cinema when we do Friday the Thirteenth, uh, the final chapter, and anything else that she's available to talk about what she likes when we do stuff <laughs> here on Panels to Pixels. Uh, you could also hear me, not just here on Panels to Pixels podcast, as always. Uh, we'll be covering or finishing up the Gen V. Uh, it was a lot of scheduling <laughs> contrasts. <laughs> Rob was like, I asked him for tomorrow night. And he's like, dude, uh, we're recording my podcast. I'm like, oh, darn. 
I forgot. <laughs> and then we're seeing Godzilla. Okay, okay. I was like, uh, but he was trying to see if I could do it with somebody else for Gen B for the last two episodes. Not many people are interested in doing it because me and Rob have been doing it currently. So uh, we're going to try to wrap that up by the end of this weekend and get that out to you. So at least, you know, we could wrap up Gen V. It's been about three weeks since it ended. So, <laughs> but I'm It'll pretty sure there. there. Yeah, I'm sure there are a lot of people that have watched it and just haven't listened or to anybody else. Or if they have watched it, they want to hear our take on it. So I uh, look forward to hearing that when we do get to it. Uh, look forward to us doing what if when that comes out. We'll be continuing our coverage with that for that particular show. Uh, I'm looking forward to the new season because I really enjoyed the last one. <laughs> I loved uh, what if. Yeah, there's going to be cool new pops out there. There's going to be cool new action figures, too, probably for it because all the weird stuff that they do. Um, and then also, yeah, on top of that, since we're talking about what if podcast go, we'll be covering that as well. So I believe Jason will probably be putting that on house podcast. Go, so you could always check them out, too, when they cover the uh, what if series from Disney Plus. Uh, you could also hear me. I already mentioned it. Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. Obviously, I have a lot in the works. We're final um, Friday the Thirteenth, final chapter with Jamie, uh, with Aim for the Head with Diana and her partner. Uh, we'll be covering Night of the Comet, and definitely Godzilla minus one with either Rob, Adam, and myself, or just me and Rob, depending, or maybe even Frank, depending on who wants to cover it. So, uh, we'll look forward to getting that out to you as soon as we can. You could also hear me on Fantasy Picks Movie Edition, which I kind of mentioned because that's Rob's podcast on Parkour Entertainment Network, which this particular episode and uh, podcast is affiliated with. So, uh, yeah, the uh, we're doing a Fantasy Picks final uh, fantasy. Ugh, I'm, I can't <laughs> even speak tonight, huh? Fantasy Picks Movie Edition. Uh, we're we're covering the next episode. I will be on is our top five Marvel films. So obviously it's right up my alley when it comes to that. Very similar to what we do at Wilhelm. Uh, what what Ben does at Wilhelm, I shouldn't say we. Ben does at Wilhelm. and uh, But it's done in a little bit different fashion. It's more of like a football league. So if somebody picks out a movie, you can't take that movie. It has to be a completely different movie altogether within your top five league. So that way it could compete. Uh, and it's the battle to the death, depending on if people send in feedback and say, I really like Mark's pick or I like, you know, Rob's top five. So, you know, send in feedback that way, too, if you do listen to them or us there. Uh, you could also hear me on. Well, obviously, on podcast forward slash <laughs> or slash Wilhelm, uh, the combined uh, podcast with uh, Ben Beck and myself covering Monarch, which is uh, Monarch, the Leg uh, Legacy of Beasts. And uh, we're having fun with that. We just put out episode three, episode four will be coming up this weekend. Uh, check that out and then send feedback that way. You could follow that on uh, facebook.com forward slash Wilhelm or facebook.com forward slash podcastica. So you'll see images and you can send in feedback that way or Wilhelm at gmail.com. And uh, that's about it for us plugging ourselves and being I a plug fest. So. Uh, with that, uh, that is our coverage for Invincible. And we look forward to uh, the remaining part of this particular season come next year. So with that, I am Mark. And I'm Jamie. And this was Panels to Pixels podcast. Different panel, different pixel, same podcast. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night. Good night.